day 300. Oh, I've had such a great morning. Look at this. Oh my gosh, the sun. It was a gorgeous sunrise this morning with all the like um, different shades of orange and pink and blue. And now all these beautiful fall colors and the wind is blowing. So we even have like um, <clears throat> leaf snowflakes. <laughs> Wow. <clears throat> oh man, oh man. Okay, so today, Philippians um, chapter three. It's a good one. I kept it short and sweet today. I might, <laughs> maybe I was saving up for today. That, okay, obsessed to possess is my little catchy title today. Um, and Paul is definitely obsessed. He's obsessed to not only possess, but to be possessed. Um, he is running his race. He talks about running the race to attain the perfection with which he first experienced when fir Christ first possessed him. Whoa. And I think I did a pretty good job of paraphrasing that. I, I really pondered it and meditated on it this morning and how that's his race like that's what he's living for he's living for trying to recreate a perfect moment of when he first met Christ and um wow that is that is something um and we all whether you believe in Christ or not, um, or you, you follow the Bible, we all probably have moments in our life where, that we know were like life changing, where we shifted from maybe one level of consciousness and understanding and experience of life, and then kind of something, we were touched by something. Something touched us. We, the veil was maybe pulled down for a minute. And life just was like, oh. and you understood maybe for a moment and experienced the oneness, you know, the magic, the mystery, like all of it. You know what I'm talking about? If you haven't had one of those, maybe you will. Um, I hope you will, because those are some defining moments. And sometimes there are even still quiet moments. Like Paul had the whole, you know, dramatic, you know, imagery we get of scales falling off the eyes and, you know, literally like, you know, being kind of seized and his sight being taken away for a few days. Like, you know, a lightning bolt, like life is this way one day and this way the next. Uh, but he was still obsessed with that feeling of being totally possessed by the oneness and all of it and maybe having a little bit of clarity into the mystery. <sighs> Again, I went to some deep places this morning, you all, <laughs> but I, and it's going to be, I don't know if I can even articulate them, but the, <sighs> but that when you have those moments and then you seek them, and then that you realize they are also seeking you or he is seeking you. He does want to possess us. We're, we are, we are possessed. Actually, we just block, we do, we block it because we're out in the world trying to possess other things, titles, uh, approval, um, love from other humans. Like that's what we're obsessed with. Like, I'm going to find it all out here. I want to possess this out here. Uh, and I've definitely been that. Like, I've had those moments of like, oh, this is what life is about. And then I go and try to satisfy it by the delicious meals and uh, the wine and the experiences and the travel and the... Hi, how are you? And the... Um, the houses and the cars and the this and the that. And they do satisfy for a moment, but it's so fleeting, right? I'm almost like reminded this morning um, with, uh, with Paul's words of Solomon, 
you know, I, I've done it all. I've seen it all. And at the end of the day, it's all like chasing the wind. It doesn't satisfy. It doesn't possessing all of these things and doing all of these things. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Love is all that matters. And not only you being able to love, but being possessed and held by love. And then you realize you have been all along. You were just too busy looking down here to even know um, or feel it. Or, and because it's, and because God designed us as humans to have language and consciousness and the ability to think about thinking even, the only way we can experience this is to experience this. And we want to just stay here all the time and we can't. <laughs> and so we're like obsessed we're obsessed with possessing this feeling all the time. Desire. Um, think of the U2 song. And the desire is what keeps us going, keeps us running that race, that obsession. But when we're chasing and being obsessed by the right thing, like the ultimate, the love, the only thing that actually matters that is something worth being obsessed to possess and to be possessed by. And that's what possession is. When you are possessed, that other thing is obsessed with you too. Wow. Like, think about that. God is obsessed with us. Like, for millennia, he has been nothing, doing nothing but chasing us, pursuing us, getting us to understand, finding all these ways to send messengers and tell us. And we're like, okay, that sounds great. But I don't, but it, that type of love, it takes a while to cultivate and to grow and to understand. And humans are impatient. We're like, nope, I need, I need, I need, I ain't got no satisfaction. Um, the Rolling Stones have been singing about it. And we're obsessed with trying to find it here and now and now and now and all the time and all the time. And like, And we're stuffing ourselves and we are the shadow of a leaf like caught my eye. There's my human instinct going, whoa, wait a minute. Am I in danger? Um, danger from the leaf. Uh, why we're obsessed with being obsessed with love. And we're looking for it in all the wrong places. Uh, but we don't know that. It feels because we get enough, we get enough satisfaction that it leaves us wanting for more. Oh, I gotta do that again. I gotta do that again. But if we can just let go, which that's hard, it's not this is not easy stuff we're talking about, because we have to fight our human impulses, inclinations. We have to have self-discipline. Paul talks a lot about self-discipline. We've got to have the self-discipline to do what's right in the long term, the better choice, and to forgo the immediate gratification, the instant gratification, the things that our flesh is like, come on, like, it's not that bad. It, this is great. This is good. This is good. It's good enough. Like, why do you want all of that up there? This is good enough. And so we settle. But yet within the human heart and poets and authors and teachers and philosophers and theologians have been writing about this stuff for millennia. Singers have been singing songs about it. Painters have been painting. We all have this. Like, we all have this yearning. And we are all obsessed but maybe just obsessed with the wrong thing. What if you tried to do the hard work of letting go of your ego and just tried walking the way of love, the way that Christ showed us, that Paul was really also trying to emulate and pattern himself after, and then he's going out and saying, here, do what I'm doing. I'm doing what Christ did, do what I'm doing. Like, 
give it a try. That's kind of where I am now. I'm like, okay, I'm going all in, going all in people with willingness, a willing heart, even if, um, and cause the world will always be there. All the things will, hey there, hey. Uh, one of my dog friends, <laughs> the world will be there um, waiting for me with open arms to give me all the, the hearts of my desire or desire of my heart. <laughs> I said it backwards. And if it doesn't work out, right? What do I have to lose? Maybe my life, maybe. Um, I don't know. This is where I, <sighs> deep stuff. Gave you a short message yesterday because Paul left us with some good, pretty good questions about being encouraged and comforted and fellowshipping. <sighs> But to what end? To what end? Being okay and content with good enough. And maybe it is good enough. Like I'm not judging. I just know the seeds that are being planted in my heart. And the pull, the obsession I'm starting to feel <laughs> with being possessed by love. Um, and the willingness to pull the veil down. All right. Rise and shine, people. I think I've gone deep enough with you today. I've probably given you, like, what is she talking about over there? Uh, <laughs> rise and shine. Philippians chapter 3, running our race, obsessed with possessing. Possessing the feeling of perfection for which Christ first possessed me. Or are you okay with just possessing, being obsessed with possessing all the things of the world. We have a choice. What do you wanna do with your free will, your one wild and precious life? We all get to decide. All right, see you later. Look at that, wow, yellow, all the colors. Bye.